Hello and welcome to the Linux command line tips and tricks video series. In this video, we will look at the alias command to help you with shortcuts for commands. Please help me out by hitting the subscribe button so I can live within my means. Shell aliases are very useful tools in the Linux command line. They save you typing time and relieve you from making typos. This feature of the shell can append options to an existing command to assist you in some commonly typed commands. Let's say I frequently type the ls space dash lah to obtain the long file listing with the human readable and show hidden files options. I often mistype ls dash lah without the space or ls space zero lah instead. What if I can just type lh and get the same result? That's where aliases come in. They're like custom shortcuts for the commands. So I can create an alias of lh, which will execute ls space dash lah. To do so, I type alias space lh equals single quote ls space dash lah single quote. Make sure there are no spaces around the equal sign. Now when I type LH, the shell will execute LS-LAH. If you just type alias on the command line, you can see what the default aliases are set to in Kane. And here you can see that LH was just set by us. But the alias command can also be used to remap an existing command to anything you want. Someone can create an alias for a common command to something destructive. For example, they can do alias lsusb equals single quote cd slash semicolon rm star dot star single quote. So just be aware of what you type when you are on a system that you are not familiar with. To remove an alias, you can use the unalias command. So just unalias ls usb. And to verify that they removed it, you can just type the alias ls usb command, and then we will get that it is not found. Another way to verify is just to type the alias by itself, and the system will show you all the aliases available to the current shell. From the alias command, we see that the ls command has been aliased to use colors. If we want to temporarily disable the alias for just one time, you can use the backslash to precede a command and it will be unaliased for just that one time. For example, if we just type ls, you see the colors being used to separate out directories versus files. And if we run it again with the backslash ls, this will show the default behavior of ls, which does not have any colors. Note that using the unalias and backslash will only temporarily disable the alias. If you reboot or open another shell, those aliases may come back active. The reason is that every time a new shell is started, the shell will execute a few setup files. In the bash shell, each user has a file named .bashrc in their home folder. Within that file are a few aliases which are set up for you. So if we do vi of tilde slash dot bash rc, in the cane distro, the ls command is alias to use colors, as are the various grep commands. And it looks like someone had commented out the dir command as an alias to ls. So you can feel free to make any adjustments here if you want to add permanent aliases. There are some folks who want to have a separate file for the aliases. You may see a dot bash underscore profile or dot bash underscore aliases or just dot aliases file in their home folder. If you have one of these files and want to get the system to recognize any updates without rebooting or starting a new shell, you can run the source command on that file. So for example, if I want to create a separate file called .aliases, I'm going to go ahead and vi tilde slash .aliases. And I'm going to add an alias 
to just the letter A to run alias. I'm going to alias rm to become rm-i, so it is interactive. So every time I remove a file, it will ask for confirmation. Similarly, I am going to do the same thing for mv and cp. And when I'm done, I can save the file by doing colon wq to write and quit. Then to activate those aliases, I can just do source tilde slash dot aliases. And now if I type A, which I had just uh, alias to the word alias, we can see all of the aliases that are activated for the shell. Here are some other useful aliases I have seen from other folks. Feel free to add these to your collection and comment below with your favorite aliases. So I can alias dot dot to CD one level up. I can alias dot 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 to CD two levels up. I can alias BC to start the basic calculator with the math library. I can alias jobs to jobs dash L so that it always runs and lists the process IDs in addition to the normal output. I can alias ping to ping dash C4, which means it's going to only run ping with four packets being sent to emulate what the uh, Windows behavior is for ping. I can alias PSA to be PSAUXC, so it's basically going to run the PS command with the AUXC options. And then similarly, I can alias PSE to become PS-ELF, so it'll run PS with the dash E, dash L, and dash F options. Here I'm going to test out the dot dot alias, and sure enough, we went up one level, and I'm going to test out the ping alias, and sure enough, it only sent out four packets and stops. Lastly, I'm going to run alias to see what we have as alias commands, and here's the list. An alias that I like to use for forensics work is something that will take the output of ls block and then grep it for disk. So I'm just going to do alias lsb equals single quote ls block pipe grep disk single quote. And when we run this, it shows all of the physical block devices. We get the SCSI devices as well as the NVMe and MMC BLK devices. So definitely very useful for forensics work. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video where we learned about command aliases. For system administrators or forensic examiners, aliases are something you should be aware of if you are on an unknown system and the commands you are typing are giving you unexpected results. You could very well be executing an aliased version of the command. Hope you enjoyed it, and if so, click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. Please hit the subscribe button to get notified when the next video comes out. Also, please leave messages in the comment section below so I know what you liked and didn't like, or what you may want to see in future videos. See you next time.